All right. Hey, guys. What's today, Yvonne? It's Just manic. Another manic Monday. Monday. <laughs> All right. We're back, guys. We are back. Uh, manic Monday was such a popular show, but you know, you got to do your revisions and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, and so I am very excited to be back with the co-hostess with the mostest, Yvonne Sandoval, Sandoval, as she says, oh, Sandoval yeah. of Leverage 365. What's up, Yvonne? Not much. Just keeping on doing my thing and keeping watching. On doing your thing. Watching the TED show. What else is there to do? <laughs> well, I like that thought process, but I also know you're a very busy businesswoman. So it's been a while since you've been on the show. So give them a little bit of background on you and then we can dive right into Manic Monday. Uh, I can't wait. Well, thanks so much. We're back with Manic Mondays. Um, I'm Yvonne with Leverage 365. Uh, so, you know, I'm in the same field as, as uh, Ted is and everyone knows what Ted does. Hey, Rose, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, everyone knows Ted's with Freedom Mortgage, and Ted is the, uh, the, the loan officer, director of the world kind of thing. I think it's all of Freedom. I don't know. I don't um, know. We'll go with like, that. I he's like high it. high up. He's like at another level. You know? <laughs> um, and so I just try to facilitate and work with uh, real estate agents, helping them to get their database in order, um, touching their database over the course of 12 months, you know, we've got it, video, email, uh, direct mail, uh, social media, all the things that a real estate agent needs in order to successfully um, and consistently and purposefully touch that database to get those referrals. That's about it. Keeping busy with my with my real estate agent clients um, and doing some teaching as well. Not as much as we were back pre-COVID, but um, doing some webinars. And that's, you know, one way of getting that information out to help people to grow their business. Yeah, so you had to... Uh, pivot. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Rose. Hey, Ryan. You had to pivot a little bit. Uh, what was that like? So I, I promised people that it was music trivia and a few business tips. So before we get into the fun music trivia part, tell them a little bit because you had to shift your business. You were doing a ton of in-person uh, seminars and you had to change when everything shut down. Absolutely. Um, in the, over 12 months, uh, I did 41 classes in person. Um, so doing those, you know, total line and in brokerage, uh, in the offices of brokerages, um, helping agents to learn about marketing with five different classes that I teach. Um, so that was, you know, when the COVID happened, we had to shut all of that down. So the, you know, that in person face to face kind of a contact just went away. Um, but webinars and doing, I call them Zoominars because we know we love Zoom. Zoominars. Zoominars. Zooming and improving, as I like to say. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what we had to go to. So, you know, we're doing the best we can to make sure people are still growing and evolving their businesses even during this time. Um, and because this is even more so important that people are staying in touch because we're limited to how we can keep in touch. Um, those pop buys, those door knocking, those things are not in our pockets anymore as real estate agents. Um, so we're helping them to make sure that all of the avenues of communication um, are being utilized and being utilized at a high level because this is your only method of reaching out to people. So yeah, I had to pivot and I had to change. Um, and of course, I also evolved my, my offerings and my, my services to, uh, to evolve as well. So I have all different packages and things to help people, no matter what their budget, um, I have something for them. I love that. I love, you know, I think it's so important because people forget to uh, touch their database. Um, and I think people, or they don't know how, uh, or what they're doing is sending out one little post once a week or sending out their one newsletter that corporate may or may not be changing their name on and sending it out to another million uh, agents, 4 million agents. So uh, touching your database in a way that's impactful and intentional and uh, actually gets in touch with them in a way that they feel like you are personally interested in what they're doing is where the key is. And I think a lot of people forget their database and you do a phenomenal job at Leverage 365, making sure that that database is 1000% touched in the most appropriate ways. Yeah. I mean, 
totally custom written from scratch, nothing pre-canned, um, nothing generic. Uh, has to be from that person and has to sound like that person. So it's a it's an intricate uh, way of doing things and it's a higher level way of doing things. But we are here to help you to do so and we do it for you so that you don't have to figure it all out. Who wants to figure it out? Well, who wants to? <laughs> I can't. I can't figure my own life out. I have to have people dress. I need handlers. So I think a lot of people are in that same place though. They know their core business, but they don't know how to expand on it. And then this COVID, of course, and quarantine added a whole bunch, a, a whole new level of unprecedented craziness. And now people had to figure out how to pivot. And so you Absolutely. offer them an opportunity to do that, which is really awesome. Absolutely. They're All here right. So I don't remember how we came up with this idea. We both like music. Uh, we both <laughs> love '80s music. Uh, we mm -hmm. both like trivia. And we thought back in the day, hey, why not have a show where we kick off people's Mondays in a fun, positive way? Uh, and that's really how Manic Monday was born. And of course, you gotta love that song uh, by the Bangles, Manic Monday, which you know who wrote it? I do? Oh, I think so. Oh, I don't... was it Prince? Yes. Woohoo! I already yes. got one minute actually wrote it under a pseudonym called Alexander Nevermind or something very similar like that. And, um, but yeah, for the bangles, I used to think Susanna Hoffs was hot. So that yeah. should tell you the, she was the lead singer of the bangles. So that's my bangles trivia. All right. <laughs> so you've done research, you've done good stuff. We're going to sing, we're going to learn some new trivia. Uh, we're going to guess. I have my, um, Allegedly, my LaCroix. We all know it's not a LaCroix um, in my glass. <laughs> and I'm ready to go. This is why I love Ted. Oh, yeah. So we're going to get started. And I'm also going to be throwing in a little bit of my background, too, because of, as many of you know, I'm from the music business, whatever that means. Um, growing up in Broadway in Manhattan, living um, under the, basically the studio's mixing board. Um, my fa family had a recording studio. So some of these trivia, I'm actually going to interject my personal interaction with some of these artists. Nice. So I yeah, like that. That in. my previous life, we'll talk about that. Your previous um, life. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and you say, you say Manhattan, right? So Manhattan. <laughs> we kind of basically Manhattan eat Island. Island. Yeah, we you kind of eat Manhattan it. Island. Ma Manhattan's <laughs> much more um, poised <laughs> when you say it. I love my Staten Island guys. All right, so I'm all in. I'm ready. I'm excited. Uh, I didn't do anything this time, but of course, you know, I can always pull trivia out of my out of the out of a hat. Oh, um, I got stuff. So we're all good. I'm ready. All right. Go. So, which Pet Shop Boy song was about the lead singer's Catholic upbringing? I'll give you four to choose from. Then I give you multiple choice. It's a sin. What have I done to deserve this? Always on my mind, heart. Was it four okay, so songs? I know it's, I believe it's definitely not always on my mind because I think that's a redo. I'm going to guess, I don't know, what have I done to deserve this? That sounds like a Catholic uh, song, right? When we have, what have I done to deserve this? No, it's it's actually a, it's a sin. It's a sin. How does that song go? I forgot. Oh my gosh, it's a sin. It's a sin. I think they scream that a couple of times. That, that was the obvious answer, but Pet Shop Boys I loved because they did so many cool songs back in that that era. They had um, that one they did with Dusty Springfield was so good too. Uh, oh, yeah. I love I loved them. I don't even know what happened to them. Well, the, I'm glad you asked because they are still touring. Believe it or not, did not uh, know that. They're not touring here in the, in the states um, this year, but they are still touring over in, in Europe. Um, do you want to take a guess if their age range, is it the 50s, 60s, or 70s, their age? Jeez, I'd go with 60s. You are correct, but also pushing the 70s. Neil Tennant and Chris Lowe make up the Pet Shop Boys. Chris Tennant is 66, wow. and Chris Lowe is 61. So when you go to see the Pet Shop Boys, <laughs> just let you know. There How do these people get old? I don't know what happened. I don't understand any of it. I did not, but I, I feel like they did, and I have no idea what's going on. We just keep getting better with age. Right? Yeah. We're like wine. Like a fine wine. 
<laughs> Absolutely. So our next question, um, this is right out of my wheelhouse. Which female singer was responsible for the song could have been? Is it Debbie Could have been so beautiful. Oh. Tiffany, could have been so right. Could have been my lover. I love that song. Oh, I love that. So I was going to give you choices of Debbie Gibson, Paula Abdul, Belinda Carlisle, or Tiffany. So Ted got it right. Tiffany. Tiffany. I, I want you to say Paula Abdul again. Paula. Paula Abdul. Come on. Well, she's got a great commercial out, by the way, Paula Abdul. She it's, does. It's so good. It's her and by herself next to each other. Yeah, I love oh. that. I love she that. She looks great. She looks amazing. So, Tiffany, a lot of people don't. Remember Tiffany, as she was such a, it was a very short period of time, the eighties, but so, so explosive. Um, she Absolutely. and Debbie Gibson seem to be synonymous with each other. So Debbie, here, here's another little bit of trivia because we're going over ages. Do you, I want to, I'm going to tell you the four people with the multiple choice, Debbie Gibson, Paula Abdul, uh, Linda, Belinda Carlisle and Tiffany. Who of the, out of those four, who is the oldest? I'm going to guess Paula. Paula Abdul is not the oldest. So Belinda must be. Belinda is 61 years old. Wow. Paula's 58. Debbie Gibson is 49. And Tiffany is 48. I uh, love Tiffany, as that we, we were talking about. Tiffany and yeah. Debbie Gibson, they all, you guys aren't, well, those of you who know 80s music, they did mall, mall tours, as we would say in New Jersey, New York. And that's really how they got popular. They would perform. That's how they were able to promote. It was a very ingenious way, I think, Absolutely. genius way of promoting back in the day. And they would get everybody in a froth. And that's sort of how they both came into being in the 80s. And they hit at the same time, right? It was right around the 87, 88 era. You were still on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved all of them. They were amazing. Yeah, Tiffany's great big hit was uh, I Think We're Alone Now. Yes. And that was on the mall tour of 1987. Um, and, and Debbie Gibson, I've known her since she was, uh, God, about 14 years old. My dad was producing, was one of her first producers. And I remember driving to Connecticut to see her in a play, The Christmas Carol. That was when before, she was 14 at the time. Um, and that was when I first got introduced to her. And then we used to have, you know, hang out as friends because the parents used to get together and we'd have coffee, you know, in New York, you'd have coffee. And yeah, coffee, coffee in New York. So the kids would play together. So I, I know, and I, me and Debbie would play in, the, in my dad's studio and just, you know, play around on the, you know, so keyboards cool. and stuff. So that was um, my parlay into the 80s. Never wanted to be a pop star like she did, so. <laughs> They were good. They were they were amazing. I mean, they were. It was fun. Good times. Were, good times. It was good times. The eighties. <laughs> so Frankie goes to Hollywood. Had a yes. song that was banned on UK radio in nineteen eighty four because of its lyrics. Do you want me to give you the four choices, or do you know the name? Relax. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so relax is such a great song. It was banned because. If any of you like, or like most of us, you don't, you kind of sing along with the lyrics and you don't exactly know what you're singing sometimes, you should look at the lyrics to that song because it was very controversial at the time um, and definitely has a lot of underlying meanings. Yeah. Um, do you know where the group got its name? I do actually. See, this is why we play trivia. Tell them, how did the, how did the group, because that's an odd name. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Well, apparently, uh, from what I have here, the group name derived from a New Yorker magazine uh, a article that featured the headline, Frankie goes to Hollywood, with a picture of Frank Sinatra. So that's where they, and then there was a pop art poster made um, from, that, from that picture, and they got their name from that. That's correct. And that's really their only hit. I mean, the only hit that anyone knows of, but it was a big hit, like giant. Well, everyone, I, knew, everyone knew that song. Absolutely. And, and you know, since I'm in marketing, um, I was a kid walking around the streets of, of New York here on, on Broadway uh, between 40, 48th and 49th. And back in the day, how they, uh, what they viral marketed back in 1980, I guess it was 83. They took um, the sidewalk 
and they had a stencil and they spray painted the name Frankie Goes to Hollywood all over the sidewalk um, you know, and, and the street, which is totally illegal, uh, by the way. Uh, but, you know, it was 83 and who cared? So the, <laughs> that's how they viral marketed themselves in, in the streets, literally, of New York. Love Around it. the same time Madonna was doing her, uh, her stuff, too. So yes. here's a rock trivia. Uh -oh. Need You Tonight was released by which rock band? In you Excess. I didn't even have to give out the uh, clues in excess. You know what? I love them. I sad story of Michael Hutchins, right? Yeah. Hutchins or Hutchins. Um, he committed suicide. They're that era of in excess, though. Their music um, is just phenomenal. I love every one of their songs, I think. But that was, they were very um, edgy, but his voice was so good. Uh, yeah. So much talent there. A new sensation by oh. them is my favorite, very favorite In Excess song. And of course, back in the day, it's spelled I-N-X-S. And I was dumb, I didn't know what that even was. I mean, I've learned over time that's In Excess, but you know, nobody knew how to pronounce it unless you learned. So exactly. yeah, they, they were a phenomenal band. I loved it. So here's a little uh, kind of movie and song trivia, because you know, the 80s were a big time for soundtracks. Yeah. That was it. I mean, you, if you had a movie, you have a great soundtrack to accompany it. So yeah. Sylvester Stallone requested Survivor write a, a smash single, Eye of the Tiger. But why did he do that? Because there was, it was, he was trying to get the licensing rights to a particular song, and he wasn't able to. So he had to go and request a Survivor, who was a, a fairly up-and-coming band at the time, to write Eye of the Tiger. But do you know what song that Sylvester Stone actually wanted to use in that movie? Huh, no. I know the movie, mm -hmm. but I don't know what song. I don't know this. So this is Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. <laughs> he wanted the licensing rights to use it in the movie, and he was denied. So he had to get a song written for it. And Eye of the Tiger wound up being it in 1982. And that, that song went to number one for six weeks. I love oh. that song. Isn't it great? From Rocky Three, guys, in case you don't know, I believe Rocky Three. Um, phenomenal song. And Survivor did a lot of great um, poppy kind of songs back then. But I Have the Tiger has that initial beat at the beginning that everybody knows when that song comes on. You know what I Have the Tiger. It took me a while to figure out some of the words to Eye of the Tiger. I think there are many of us that still sing them incorrectly. Um, <laughs> but that is such a great song. It was a great workout song. I allegedly did that in the 80s. It was a great, um, just a great anthem to get people moving. It was a great roller skate song too. Uh, just uh, roller, skating. roller skating, yes. Roller skating at the rink. That was where people hung out back in the day. We did hang out at the rink. God, that's scary. Oh my gosh. So. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Did you see the, the Netflix, or is it, I'm sorry, I think it's Apple TV, I can't remember quite well, um, that Adam Lambert is the lead singer of Queen now. Yes, I did see that. What do you think about him? I think he's very talented. I mean, who's going to replace Freddie Mercury? I know. No one. But his vocal range, he's got a powerful voice on a lot of different ranges, I think it's not as high or as well developed as Freddie Mercury's, but they needed somebody who could at least emulate that or get close to it for that to even be a success. But he's a very talented singer. I was very surprised he did not win American Idol, but that's okay. The guy who did, Chris Allen, I think. Yes. I like his voice. I like some of his songs, but Adam definitely went on to do bigger and better things. And Adam was, uh, and he's such a performer. That's really what it comes down to, his performance. Yes. He, he's just an amazing person who puts himself out there. And he actually was on Broadway as well. So he had that whole stage presence um, about him since a young, very young age. So here's, here's another one. Which right. one of these songs by the police did not chart in the 1980s? Don't Stand So Close to Me, Every Breath You Take, Walking on the Moon, Wrapped around your finger. Definitely walk around the moon. 
That's right. Walking on the Moon did not yeah. chart on 1980. So. And, uh, those other three, I love Don't Stand So Close to Me. That was early 80s or late 70s. Love that song. Um, such a great, that builds up. But the other two, of course, were super popular from Synchronicity. And, uh, but I don't know the, the one that I just picked, which is obviously the right answer. And maybe that's why. I don't even know what that song is. Oh, so. if I played it for you, you'd know it. Yeah, I it's actually, know it. yeah, you'd know it if you heard it. But um, we don't, we don't have the rights to that music, so we're unable to play it. <laughs> I mean, every breath you take is a little stalkerish now that we're in the, the era that we're in. It's fascinating if you listen to the lyrics. Yeah. Um, every breath you take, I'll be watching you. I mean, it's, it's an interesting song, but it was so popular back then with that very basic guitar riff. And it's just, I don't know. I love that song. Love that whole era. He was very forward thinking because now you can really watch somebody every step. Yeah, of the time. Right. Literally yeah, from space, we can watch you. Yes. So. And Facebook <laughs> listening now. So, hey, Facebook. Hey. <laughs> so um, Bill Medley and Jennifer Warren's com combined together for a number one song in 1987. And this song was from a soundtrack, of course, of a motion picture. Which film was it? So I've had the time of my life by yeah. a Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing. I've had the time of my life. I love that end part. You know, that's the part where she runs and they're in the middle at the very end and he catches her. And, you know, they do that really really, really corny dance in the beginning when he's, <laughs> when he's walking up to the stage. Um, yes, I love that though. They were, Bill Medley had, um, he was part of the Righteous Brothers, That's right? Fair. And so Jennifer Warrens had done a lot of different songs. She was soundtrack queen for a while. That's uh, my second, that song came good. together and it was beautiful, perfect. My, my follow-up question is Joe Cocker. And Jennifer Warren's team together for a number one hip from a soundtrack in 1982. What was the name of the song and the movie? Love lift us up where we belong, up where we belong from an officer and a gentleman. Oh, I love it. Yes. I, I cannot sing this morning, so you will not be hearing this voice. <laughs> it I is know. Too... I'm all by myself. What is, is up? Need, all you by need... yourself. <laughs> See, I cannot sing this morning. Liquid. liquid. <laughs> Um, I, yes, I love that song. Joe Cocker is was such a crazy performer. And of course, Jennifer Warren's, like I said, she was the soundtrack queen for a while. And that was such a such a beautiful song. Love the end of the movie. I don't know. Great movie. Oh, it was fantastic. So this is one of my first uh, stadium concerts that I went to go see. This band named Boston only had one number one tune in their career. One, only one song, but meantime, they filled a giant stadium, back then it was called Giant Stadium. They filled this arena, even though they only had one big song in 1986. Do you want me to give you the choices? Yes, so Boston in 86, it's not Amanda, is it? It is. Okay, so it's Amanda. So that's, I didn't realize that was their only number one song once you told me the time frame because they were known for more than a feeling. Yeah. Like Boston has a great, um, oh, we have greetings from Pakistan. Hello from Pakistan. Um, yes, so I think they were, no, they were so popular in that whole arena tour area because back in the day you didn't, rock bands didn't necessarily release singles like we do now. And of course it was a different world, but they would fill the stadium, like you said. Um, but Amanda was that song from the eighties that came out of nowhere. I was like, where, where is this in Boston's thing? Exactly. So Ted, do you, do you want to talk about um, Leverage 365 and having uh, the new opportunities that we're going to talk about? Can we do that today or you want to do that another time? We can do whatever you want to talk about. It's okay. your show today. Okay, sounds good. So thank you for joining us for trivia. I wanted to make uh, everyone aware this is, Ted's got this great, great show and, and I'm just honored to have this, this ability to be with him today. And we really thank everyone for, for being here with us and enjoying some of Ted's beautiful voice. 
<laughs> and, uh, and our trivia. I admit that it's utmost right there. And, you know, when Ted's got a platform and it goes out to so many people and, and it's, it's just a community that he's developed and that community is expand, expands our uh, reach as a business. So I'm really grateful to have had the opportunity to talk a little bit about my business um, and, you know, a little bit of promotion helps during this time um, in you know, COVID times. But we want to let you know that, you know, Ted has, is, has this platform that he wants to share with you. Leverage 365 is now going to be helping Ted. We're, we're representing Ted to help him to bring you this promotional um, opportunity to, for your business. So I want to let everyone know that we're going to have ad sponsorships for all of the Ted shows that um, you can come on, you can be on the show, you can talk about your services, talk about your business, but do so with purposefulness. So we'll have uh, different ways of you doing that. And if you hear from me, Vaughn from Leverage 365, I reach out to you because Ted has chosen you um, and thought about you and how that can help your business. So be yeah. able to look out for a phone call or an email or a text from me offering you the opportunity to promote your business on Ted's show. Um, See, all of you who have been reaching out over the past three years asking about this, you know the biggest the biggest challenge for me is that I don't, I, I, I like to do this, but I don't like to do that. Well, so um, <laughs> we just, we've been waiting for the right time and I, I just have so many people who've reached out to me over time and a lot more since COVID even uh, started. And so, yeah, we are, um, I have a laundry list of people who have reached out um, and we just weren't ready. And now we're ready. So yeah, we're ready. Um, we're ready to help yeah. you promote your businesses and, and give you that platform and let you um, really, I'm just like I said, I'm so grateful to have the time to at least talk about my business and how I can help others. Why shouldn't you have that opportunity as well? So we're going to bring that to you. Um, and let me let me take care of that. Um, and Ted has been gracious enough to allow me to do so. So, Excited. do you hear we from me? It. Let's let's do this. Let's let's help businesses um, through this time by bringing them onto your platform, which is going to get them exposure to so many uh, potential clients and business partners as well. Um, so let us do that for you. Um, Leverage three sixty five is going to be doing that um, on behalf of Ted at the Ted Show. And then you've got something else too, right? Oh yeah. So Ted's going to show us a little clip in a moment. Um, I'm so this excited. This is my first to time doing this. So. So yeah, um, Ted, Ted's technology man right now. <laughs> pay attention so. to Yvonne or this <laughs> that I'm going to do because we're, we're not sure. Thank big, big shout out to Ronnie G who's my teammate and the, the uh, one with the brains and the knowledge. He just last night, I think taught me how to do this. So let me see if I can play it. Great. Let's, let's try it. We're announcing the premiere Thursday, August 6th at 2.30 of Real Estate Unhinged with Rose uh -huh. and Yvonne Sandoval. We are going to bring you some really great stuff. It's This is for everyone. This is for um, people who are in the industry, but also for consumers um, Rose Kemp, as you know, is an amazing real, uh, realtor. She has been in this business, um, you know, going on t close to 20 years. Um, she's, she's just amazing. Um, and she's got so much uh, to share with so many people. So we're, we're a good team and we're going to bring you um, to some great content, high level content, because, you know, she's a consummate professional, um, as I try to be. <laughs> But Rose is Rose. I don't is the fit best. into any of those categories, but yes, <laughs> you and Rose definitely fit into those categories. We're we're in a circle of trust. We're we're in that circle. We're we we are all working together. Ted and I, myself, Rose, all of us to you know lift the uh, level of this community, real estate community, bringing the the best services, the best uh, products, the best. You know, we're here for you. So. No matter where you are, whether you're a consumer, whether you are um, a real estate agent, if you're in this industry, we are all here for you. And the Rose is excited as I am too for Real Estate Unhinged. It's going to be on August 6th. It's going to be our first show at 2.30. And we're going to be using the platform like you see right here um, to bring that to you. So 
Ted, this has been amazing. You're amazing. This platform's amazing. And I really, really, really am so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm excited. Thank you for doing the trivia work. Um, You didn't sing today, though. It's it's too early for me. I'm a rock star. I don't get up until like, you know, usually around I understand your pain on that. Believe me. Um, This little LaCroix helps me with that early part. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we, if you guys have uh, trivia questions you want to send to us, uh, songs you want us to talk about, movies, anything 80s trivia, you know, we can dip in. We dipped a little into the 70s today. We could dip in a little bit. So we're wide open. Uh, we're going to do some themed stuff. We'll focus on all soundtracks, all hair bands. We'll figure it out as we go. All prints. Uh, we'll have our own little glee uh going with our themes and um that's really the point is kind of kick kick off your week with some fun and a couple of business tips from the business people thank you so much for what you're doing yvonne thanks i'm very happy for you i'm very excited for leverage 360 365 i think what you do is amazing and i i believe a lot of people can benefit from these services that you offer all right so manic monday is awesome and kicked off and we're all golden thank you so much ted have a fabulous week and everyone you enjoy please if you need yes. us anything, reach out to buy the ted or myself we're here for you absolutely all right guys we'll see you back at one o'clock i've got at least one performer two performers today one o'clock is uh hannah judson she will she's a performer and a singer and i think uh master poet lion lamby is on the show today uh, at two, and we just have a great week for you. So tune in, support these artists, support these local businesses. Um, We can all use as much support as we can get right now. And that's the whole point of this platform. Thank you so much, Yvonne. We'll see you guys back at one o'clock. Send us your trivia. What do you want me to sing? What do you want Yvonne to sing? Let's do some stuff like that too, just to make Mondays fun. All right, guys, we'll see you. Love you to pieces.